الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين أما بعد. It's already 24 days in the month of Ramadan, and we approach in the 25th night. So much time in the month of Ramadan have already elapsed and already gone. And if it is here to do a little muhasab, a little account of our own selves, we will know and we will see the states that we have reached and we have come, and that which we intend to reach and intend to go at the end of Ramadan. Yesterday we talked about Musa alayhi salam, and when Musa alayhi salam he crossed the sea and he went across to the other side, the different fitna and the different trials that Musa alayhi salam undertook, and the different trials that Musa alayhi salam had to go through with his people. And the type of things that they had to do in order to be forgiven. And the ease that the ummah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa have been given with regards to forgiveness. Another incident from the life of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, it's approaching his death time. He's about to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends the angel of death to Musa alayhi salam. He takes the surah and he takes the form of a man. He comes to Musa alayhi salam and when he comes to Musa alayhi salam and he tells Musa that oh Musa your time has expired, your time is coming to an end and you're going to have to yield up your soul and you're going to die oh Musa. Musa alayhi salam he was such a Nabi, he was such a prophet who was very very strong and very very harsh and we can understand the type of laws, we can understand the type of harshness from the laws in the time of Musa alayhi salam. Wherein they had those laws, an air for an air, a tooth for a tooth, etc. Those were the type of laws in the time of Musa salam, rugged, difficult, hard laws. But those laws were perfect for the type of people that lived at that time. So therefore it was with regards to perfection. Musa salam, he had awesome brilliance and awesome strength. Musa salam, once two individuals were arguing. Musa alayhi salam just hit one of them upon his chest, the man fell dead. Strength of Musa alayhi salam, he was extremely strong. So when this malak and when this angel came to Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam hit this malak and he hit the angel. He hit the angel to such an extent the riwayat and the traditions mention that it caused the eye of this angel to become black. This angel, he then goes and he returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to Allah that Musa alayhi salam, it seems as though he doesn't want to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells the angel, return to Musa and tell Musa alayhi salam to place his hand on an animal. And the amount of hair that is beneath the hand of Musa alayhi salam, tell Musa that he is going to live to that extent of time. So this malak and this angel, he returns. He tells Musa alayhi salam what to do. He tells him the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam subhanallah, he asks a beautiful question. Musa alayhi salam, he says that if it is or after the expiation of the amount of years that is beneath or to the extent of the hair that is beneath the hand when I place it on this animal, when that time were to expire, what's going to happen? What then? After all of that, what's going to happen? The angel says, you are going to mat, cut mata, you are going to die. So Musa alayhi salam, he then told the angel, what's the difference in dying then and dying now? Take my soul now. Musa alayhi salam, he says, there is no difference. If it is my life is extended towards that time and I were to die now, I am ready to die and I am ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Musa alayhi salam, he made one dua, though, one request. That when it is I'm about to die, I would love to die close to the promised land. Musa alayhi salam, he died close to Masjid al-Aqsa. So much so that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that if it is I was there, I will have shown you exactly where the cover and the grave of Musa alayhi salam is. From this one incident and from this one narration, it's not just the story that's there, however, there are many lessons to be learned from this simple incident. One of them, or the first of them, is that with regards to the Anbiya and with regards to the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives special favors towards different ambiya and towards different prophets. So much so that before they die, the prophets, they are informed and they are told and they are given an ikhtiar and they are given a choice. That do you want to die now or do you want that your life be prolonged? Even the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also was asked at the time of death, do you want that your life be prolonged or do you want that you die now? However, those people whose hearts are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not want a second of this dunya anymore. They want to unite with the beloved. They want to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself, he wants to be united and he wants to be joined bil rafiq al a'la. He wants to go with those rafiq and those friends who are on high, high calibers. He wants to go and meet the anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself wanted to die and wanted to go back. So this was one speciality in which the anbiya and the prophets they were given. That before they die, they were given the choice. And many of them, they choose to actually die immediately. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many different masala and many different laws that are specific to the prophets of Islam. And nobody else are given those choices and nobody else is given those laws. For instance, look at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He have been given special laws. For instance, he cannot partake of zakat. Zakat cannot be given to the Nabi of Allah. Neither can zakat be given to the family of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Normally when a nikah and when a marriage takes place, witnesses are needed. Witnesses are needed in order for a nikah to contract and for a nikah to occur. However, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, marriages took place without any, without any human witnesses. Allah was the witness to many of his nikah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Human beings and individuals with regards to the ahkam and the laws of the Qur'an. At one point in time, a man is allowed four aswaj and four wives. When it comes towards the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ziyada, more increase was given to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it came towards tahajjud salat, for you and I, tahajjud salat is optional. For the Nabi of Allah, it wasn't optional. That was something he had to do. When it comes towards the Anbiya and it comes to the Prophets of Islam, the Ahkamat and the laws for them are different from us. For regards to the Anbiya and the Prophets, for instance, we will pray Sunnats of Asr sometimes and we will not pray them sometimes. We will do different things at different points in time. However, Anbiya and Prophets, they normally will always do the greatest and they will always do the thing. To bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quicker. They will always choose the best option all the time. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes he will pray it and sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes he will do this and sometimes he wouldn't. And the reason for that as ulama explained. Had the Nabi of Allah not done that. You and I will not have learned Islam. Had the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not left it out sometimes. We will have done it always as well. We will not know that we can leave it out sometimes. We will not have learned rukhsat and we will not have learned what permission is. We will not have learned what ease is in Islam. We will have always been doing the greatest and the best thing all the time. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ahkamah that are given to them, they are all different from compared to us. Many laws, they are different compared to us and this was one of those laws. A second thing that we learn from this incident of Musa alayhi salam is that with regards to Malak and with regards to angels, they are a makhluk and they are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are made from nur and that they are made from light. However, angels are given special abilities wherein they can take the sur and they can take the forms of human beings and they can take the forms of different things. Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the surah and in the form of one sahabi named Dihya al-Kalbi. And Dihya al-Kalbi, he was the most handsome from amongst the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. So when he came to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to take this surah and he used to take this form a lot of times or plenty of times. Similar as well, yesterday we did concerning Musa bin Zafar when Jibreel alayhi salam will come to him. Jibreel alayhi salam will come to him riding on a horse. 
So that's how he saw that wherever the footprints of Jibreel alayhi salam was, growth came about. So therefore the malak and the angels, they are able to take different surah and they are able to take different forms. With regards to Jibreel alayhi salam, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, he saw Jibreel alayhi salam in his pristine form. Jibreel alayhi salam was so huge and so big that he encompassed the entire of the horizon. He encompassed the entire of the east and the entire of the west. So big is Jibreel alayhi salam. There's one malak and one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Jahannam, the amount of malak that are going to control the entire of Jahannam are going to be only a few in number. Less than 20 angels are going to be controlling Jahannam. Not no big amount of malak and angels controlling Jahannam. And Allah says this in the Holy Quran as a means of test to the minds of people. Because we think in our minds that if it is only a few individuals that yeah, we can overpower them. But we don't understand how big and how huge a malak and an angel is. The power that Allah has vested in them and the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. So this angel when he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he came in his human form, that's why Musa alayhi salam could have harmed him. That's why Musa alayhi salam caused that black mark. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured this malak and cured this angel. Had this angel come in his original form, Musa alayhi salam will not have been able to do anything to this malak and anything to this angel. Second lesson that we learn, or second thing that we learn from this tradition. And the third thing and the most important lesson. Musa alayhi salam when he is given the choice. That if it is the amount of years that are underneath my hand with regards to the amount of years that are here. When it is that these years terminate and they come to an end. What's next? What's the other situation? What's next in my life? Musa alayhi salam he chose and he said to himself. It doesn't make any difference if I were to die then or to die now. I want to die now. The question that I will ask to each and every single one of us and myself as well. If the same situation were to be presented to you and I, will we say that we want to die now as well? Have we done such that we have done enough to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we done enough to put in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, this is what I have done with the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of my life. With the time that you have given to me, Oh Allah, these are the things that I have done. I have expiated and I have asked for your forgiveness and every single thing. I've cleared up and I've tied up all ends as we shall say. I have made every single thing and every single thing is in order. Can we answer just like Musa alayhi salam and say that we are ready to die? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one tradition. He says, Tuhfatul mu'min al The gift of a believer is death. Because in that is where it is he is able to reunite with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is where it is he can see all the things that we have been promised about. In the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. In the first few ayats of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he describes the qualities of the believers. One of the qualities that he highlights. Is that they believe in the unseen. We have been told so many times, Jannat is like this. Say one, subhanallah, a tree is planted for you. We have been told about all of those different things. All of those things are ghaib and unseen. However, at the time of death, the materialistic world falls before our eyes and we don't even have time with it. And the veils towards the unseen are now exposed and now revealed. At this point in time now, this is why Fir'aun, while dying in this stage, the veils of the unseen were open before him. His soul reached towards his throat. Though too late, Fir'aun, he said, I believe in the Lord of Musa now. Although it was too late at this point in time, Fir'aun is an example. That when it is to be a tyrant and a person who is claiming ilahiyat and claiming Lord, at the time of death now, too late, too late shall be the cry for Fir'aun. It's too late, his soul is already towards his throat being extracted. The veils of the unseen are now lifted. He is not recognizing the materialistics of this world. He is not seeing wealth. He is not seeing power. He is not seeing dominion. He is not seeing anything of this world. He is seeing azab in akhirat because he is Fir'aun. We can only imagine his plight and his state at that point in time. 
Similarly, us as well as human beings, at that point in time, Allah may explain that the veils of the unseen are now lifted. The veils of the unseen are now lifted, and we now go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, that whosoever he loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ahabba Allah liqa'ahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love to meet him as well. Wa man kariha liqa Allah, and whosoever dislikes to meet Allah, kariha Allah liqa'ahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also dislikes to meet him. Subhanallah, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, and here's this tradition. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, that O Nabi of Allah, which one of us doesn't, which one of us likes to die? It's a natural fear that comes inside of us. It's a natural deterrent. What it is we hear about that and we think about it, nobody likes to actually think about dying. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, O Nabi of Allah, therefore all of us are in the second part of this tradition. Man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allah liqa ahu. That whosoever dislikes to meet Allah, Allah also dislikes to meet him. Because in meeting Allah, you got to go through the gates of death. Upon this, the, uh, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained to Aisha. That oh, Aisha, that right now you may be afraid or you may have that hesitancy towards mouth and have that hesitancy towards death. But oh, Aisha, if it is you live a life of righteousness and good, and you're a good believer at the time of death, the angel they will come to you at that point in time and they will tell you Allah ta khafu wa la tahzanu O my abd and O my servant have no fear have no grief at all la ta khafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannah and have glad tidings of jannah and paradise that when this malak and when this angel they tell you these things you will long to go on to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. So at that point in time, you will want to meet Allah. Here is where the love to meet Allah is actually going to come. But as for those people who are very, very evil, as for those people who do not recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these malak and these angels, when they come, this will not be the kalam and this will not be the sentiments and the statements given to an individual. Rather, they will be telling you about the azab and the punishment. So therefore, at that point in time, you will not want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point in time, you will not want to meet Allah. You will not want to go towards the realms of akhirat. When we look at that amount of things that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have told us about, all of them have come true. In the Quran, Allah told us, Holy but a room, room shall be conquered. Not in the time of the Nabi of Allah, afterwards it was conquered. All the different prophecies that we dealt with. When we dealt with the Asharatul Mubashara, prophecies of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Talha and Zubair and all of the other Sahaba that we have spoken about, all the prophecies that we dealt with with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of them came true. Every single incident that had occurred so far, they have manifested themselves. What about the few that are remaining then? The few prophecies of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that are remaining. That we have not yet witnessed. It's only a person who has an ignorant mind. A mind unwilling to accept is going to actually deny these events that are going to take place and going to occur. Hence the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Holy Quran. Kullu nafsin. That every single nafs, every single individual. No exception at all. Every single individual. Kullu nafsin. Every single nafs is going to taste death. Every individual is going to die. Every person is not going to exist anymore. None of it is going to take place. When the sword and the trumpet is blown, humanity is going to become destroyed. The earth is going to fall up. In the last juz of the Holy Quran, Allah tells us about mountains flying, the sea is boiling, the sun and the moon crushing together, not existing. All of these things are going to transpire and going to occur. No existence of this earth anymore. So much so, Satan is going to die. 
Shaitan is going to taste that as well. The death, death that he will taste will be one of the most painful deaths ever experienced by anybody. Jibreel is not going to exist. Mikhail is not going to exist. Israfil is not going to exist. Malakul Maut is going to not exist anymore. Allah will cause even Malakul Maut to die. Every single thing. وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكَرَامِ The only thing that is going to remain is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah is going to remain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us and informing us every single thing is going back to Him. We are on a journey. And the journey that we are upon, it's the journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The journey we are upon right now, there is no reverse. The journey that we are upon right now, there is absolutely no U-turn. It's a one-way street to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَةٍ Even though you are in a building built up, a strong fortress, even there that will come to you, even there this angel of death will come. He is coming for each and every single individual. The question is, are we preparing ourselves for maut and for death? To be just like Musa alayhi salam. Like how Musa alayhi salam, he could say that I am ready now. I want to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. We need to be in such a state any time. Any time that maut and death comes, we need to be in such a state. And if it is we were to, with the experience that we have on the face of the earth so far, we will realize and we will see that death have absolutely no respect for anybody. Whether it is you're a baby who have took, taken half of a breath, or you're an old man, 99 years of age, absolutely no mercy. He takes you just the same way. Whether it is you're young or whether it is you're old, whether it is you're a male or a female, when the order of Allah comes for you to return to Allah, that order will take place. That order will occur and that order will happen. There is no two ways about it. If it is, there is absolutely nothing on the face of this earth that we are sure about. Our experience on this earth will teach us and tell us whether we are the biggest believer or the greatest kafir. Whether it is we are the biggest person who is an atheist and recognizes no ilah. At least one thing our experience on this earth teaches us, every single thing dies. Every single thing not exists anymore. Every single thing returns and goes back. At least we know and we agree upon that, that mouth and that comes to each and every single individual. So as human beings, as, as Muslims, this is one thing that we need to continuously be preparing ourselves for. That is why the Nabi of Allah, he taught us that whenever we perform salat, perform every single salat as though it's your last salat. Because you don't know and you have no assurance of you seeing the other salat. What's the dua that we say at the time of sleeping? Allahumma bi ismika amutu wa ahya. We are saying the dua, Allahumma, O oh Allah, in your name amutu, I'm going to die. Wa ahya, and if you wish, I'm going to be given life again. We are going to rest. However, sometimes we are so pumped up in ourselves that we have such assurance that we will get up tomorrow. We lie and we are saying this dua, Allahumma bi ismika amutu wa ahya. Yet still at that point in time, the assurance is in our hearts. We are going to get up tomorrow. When we get up in the morning, the dua that we say, Alhamdulillahilladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. All praises to Allah who has given us life. After he has given us a little bit of death. We are continuously reminding ourselves. And the Rasul has taught us to continuously remind ourselves. We are going to die. When it is we sit in our vehicles. The dua to be said. Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqarineen. Wa inna ila rabbina la munqaliboon. And towards our Lord munqaliboon we are going to return. We are driving. We sit behind our vehicles and we are reminding ourselves. I am not even sure that I will make it towards my destination. I can go back to Allah even before that. Our entire day is filled with reminders from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teaching us constantly remember, constantly remember. That's why the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, 
constantly remember Hazimul Ladzat, the snatcher away, the breaker of every single pleasure that you are going through. Remember that. Remember it. It's going to come to each and every single individual. And unfortunately, sometimes that is something nobody likes to hear about. Why he come to talk about that again for? Why does he come to tell me about something that is going to happen? The reality is, is not in what is being spoken. The reality is, is in, had you prepared for that as yet? Have it entered into the heart that we are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are realities that we are never ever going to escape from. These are things that will take place no matter what we do. Doesn't matter what we do, we are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam is teaching us in this one tradition. And the lesson that we draw from it is that death is something that we need to always keep preparing ourselves for. In whatever walk of life we are, healthy people die and sick people also die. Young people die and old people also die. Males die and females die. Babies die and adults die. There is absolutely no individual who is spared of death. Hence the reason the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exhorts us so much of times. Hence the reason Allah tells us in the Quran so many different occasions and so many different times. Remember the situation that is going to come upon each and every single one of us. It is going to come and we cannot evade it no matter what we do. No matter what we do, we cannot evade it at all, at all, at all. So therefore, as Ramadan, it finishes. And we recognize the speed at which Ramadan finishes. At the same time, recognize how fast our life is finishing. Recognize at the same time how fast we are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'll end with this tradition. The Nabi of Allah told humanity, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبْ أَوْ عَابِرُ السَّبِيلِ Subhanallah. That you live in this world, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبْ As though you're a stranger. When it is you're a stranger to a place, all you do, you come, you do what you have to do, and you normally run back. You don't lie around for too much of time. You don't stay for long, long periods of time, especially when you're a stranger. You go to a, a new building, you go to anything new, a person he normally comes, he returns quickly. He doesn't stay plenty of time. He doesn't stay for exceptional long periods of time. The Nabi of Allah says in this dunya and this world, live in this world as though you're a stranger. You're not going to stay for long periods of time. You have come, do what you have to do and return. And what's the return? Back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or live in this world as though you're a traveler. And when a person is traveling, normally when he travels, he only carries necessities and one or two other things. He doesn't carry every single thing with him. He carries those things that will make his journey comfortable and easy. That's all he goes with. Not every single luxury and comfort. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Travel in this world as though you're a traveler. Live in this world as though you're a traveler do those things that are necessary do those things that you have to do to get your way around and because your journey is continuing you are not going to go back you are on a continuous journey back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abdullah ibn umar ta'ala on this tradition abdullah ibn umar ta'ala he says when allah has given you life in the morning do not expect to live until the afternoon and if allah has given you life in the evening do not expect to live until the morning if this becomes our belief every single day and this sinks in that Allah has given me life now and I, am, I, am, I do not know if it is I'm going to see this afternoon, all our actions now are going to be done with excellence. All our actions now are going to be done with perfection because we know very well this could be my very last action before I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the afternoon as well, we will do every single thing with excellence and greatness because we are not sure if it is we are going to see the morning to do another one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these few words grant us the tawfiq to live our lives in his ta'at and his obedience. And whatever wrongs we may have done that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds it to forgive us for it, to wipe our slates clean and to show us our rahmat and mercy. And may he make the last day that we have on the face of this earth the best day of our lives. May Allah make the last day on the face of this earth the best day in our lives. The day that we do the most amount, the greatest amount of, any single, of every single thing. And I learned one dua of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Nabi of Allah used to always make dua to the, 
The Nabi of Allah, he said, do not ever wish for that. But if it is you need to make a dua, say this dua. Allahumma ahyini, O Allah grant me life. Ma kanatil hayatu khayralli. As long as life is good for me and beneficial for me. Oh Allah, let me live as long as the life that you are giving me. I'm going to do good things. I'm not going to do sins and, and obtain your anger. What a wafani. And oh Allah, cause me to die. Ma kanatil wafatu khayralli. As long as death is better for me. Oh Allah, if it is you know that I am going to do such a wrong and such a sin. That you are going to be so displeased with me and that might cast me in Jahannam. Oh Allah, let mouth and let death come to me right now. Let us prepare for our death. That every single moment and every single second of our lives be one of ridha and pleasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let not Ramadan be a wasted month and like any other Ramadan, let this Ramadan be a different Ramadan. I hope and pray Allah grants us tawfiq to practice. Wa akhir dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Shatiin fi yadayhi kafaratun lil khataya شاطئ في يديه كفارة للخطايا ذهبت يوما إليه بأدمعي وشقايا ورحت ألقي عليه تبتلي وهداي